Okay, so I assume that you can see my screen. Thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to have this talk and uh, with you and share some of the experience I've uh, gained during the last few years with everybody. And to be honest with you, this is the first time I'm talking in front of the hardcore, let's say, uh, Python developers. So um, I'm still consider myself as a learner of the Python. So uh, correct me if I'm wrong in any part of the presentation. And the things that I've done using the Pyomo package and the optimization um, is just representing my own experience. And I'm sure that you can definitely do it in a much more efficient and better way. Okay, so the title of this talk is The Art of Optimal Decision-Making in Python. And uh, we are going to introduce the package of Pyomo, which I have worked with it, and show you some different applications that can be um, solved using this specific package and the optimization methodologies. Okay, so let's go forward. So I start my slides with how it started. So these days you see on social media how it started, how it ended. And uh, so in 2017, I was working at AirGrid. And during that period, I was writing a book on the application of the power optimization methodologies in power system, which is my own background. I did my PhD in power system uh, optimization and modeling on distribution network in France. So in this book, I have developed some specific models for representing the power system operation and planning. It has different chapters. Uh, it has some general, it starts with some general examples and then it starts with the economic dispatch of generating units. It goes with up with the um, dynamic economic dispatch unit commitment on and off states of the units are considered. Then we go to the power flow, optimal power flow, energy storage, observability of the system, transmission network planning, and finally energy system integration. So since the audience of this talk might not be very familiar with the power system, I'm stopping right here so i'm not dedicating much into the power system issues um let me okay and uh, so how it's going i don't know so let me introduce the things that i have done and you might let me know if it's going well or not okay so let's go forward so the optimization applications can be um categorizing into broadly speaking can to it can be categorized into three categories. Single objective optimization, as you can see on my screen, we do have a set of constraints. We do have one objective function. We want to minimize or maximize something. And we want to make sure that uh, some specific requirements are met right there. Mm -hmm. And then the second type will be as the, multi, we call it multi-objective optimization. We might have more than one objective functions. We want to minimize the cost. We want to minimize the risk. And sometimes these objective functions are in conflict with each other. So if you want to minimize the risk, you have to pay more. But at the same time, you want to minimize your payments, okay? So is there any way we can simultaneously um, optimize both of the objective functions or not? Can we minimize both of them at the same time? Can we maximize both of them at the same time? These are the questions that we deal with them in the multi-objective optimization. And it is hand, uh, manageable by uh, Pyomo package. And finally, bi-level or multi-level optimization problems. Sometimes one of the objective functions is inside the constraint. So we want to make sure that the maximum of something is less than some given parameters, yes? At the same time, we want to minimize the other objective function. So um, sometimes, as I said, the objective function is inside the constraint. So we have some limitations on some of the objective functions and we want to optimize the other one. This is also handleable in the uh, Pyomo package. As we go forward, the level of complexity of the optimization increases. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if we want to do the optimization, these are some steps here. This is you, the yellow person here, and this is your problem, which is orally presented to you. And you want to do something, actually. You want to, um, you hear something from your employer and you want to do it in a correct way, okay? So uh, at this stage, this is the most important stage. And you as the expert is, um, you are actually uh, playing the most important role in this procedure. You need to be able to carefully describe your problem in a mathematic way because computer, Python, YAMS, or any other software doesn't understand the oral speaking. 
okay? You have to write it down in a mathematic formulation and then pass it to Pyomo, which is a packaging Python. We will speak about it later. And this Pyomo package will pass your problem to solver, okay? So even if you do it with Julia, if you do it with GAMS, the concept is exactly the same. The Pyomo or other kind of software do not solve the problem for you. They will just act as a translator and they will um, connect your problem to the solver. So what is solver? So the solvers can be different. Some of them can be seen here. So look at them here. I will like, explain them. CBC, GLPK, IPOPT, Groovy, Cplex are some of the solvers that can be linked with Pyomo. Mm -hmm. So there are some mathematics methodologies that are trying to solve the problem you have described for Pyomo package for you. Mm -hmm. And some of them are open source like CBC, GLPK and IPOPT, they are open source, they can be freely used, but some of them are commercial. Of course, some qualities have been improved, but you have to pay for the license if you want to use them. For Academia, um, the, uh, the last two are somehow free with some terms and uh, conditions, but the, uh, the, the first three are totally free and you can use them in your commercial activities. As far as I know, you need to check with the website, but these three, the first three ones are free to use in commercial activities as well, okay? So the beauty of Pyomo is allowing you to communicate with these open source solvers as well as the commercial ones, okay? So this is something that you can't have access to them in GAMS. GAMS is a great software and uh, this is the abbreviation of general algebraic modeling system, but it doesn't allow you to freely use the open source solvers. It allows you to use them, but since you are using a commercial software called GAMS, then you have to pay the license as well, okay? So this is the importance of the using of Pyomo, but it's not limited to that. Let's go forward. In order to uh, be able to solve your problem, you have to use the right tool for the right problem. What does it mean? You can't use the wrong software, uh, solver actually for uh, solving your problem. These are the different types of the optimization problem that you will face pure linear, mixed integer linear, mixed integer quadratic one, quadratic programming or nonlinear programming. So if I list the solvers here, each solver is only capable of um, solving one or two specific type of problems. So you need to know them. So for example, CBC is capable of solving linear programming and mixed integer programming, GLPK as well, the same as CBC, but their strengths is different because they are applying different methodologies to solve the optimization problems. IP opt is also capable of solving linear programming and nonlinear programming. And the last two commercial ones, which are very strong, are capable of handling the first four types of the optimization problems, okay? So each individual solver is capable of solving some specific types of your optimization problem. So the best thing to do is trying to express your optimization problem as far as you can with the linear programming because it's scalable. If the size of the problem is big, it can be handled easily by the solvers. And in practical applications, we usually face with some large scale optimization problems, which means that the number of decision variables, the things that we have to tune correctly and optimally are high. And I will show you some interesting examples to you to see how big a problem, an optimization problem can be, okay? So need to know what are these solvers, how they work and uh, how I can translate my problem into Pyomo and then Pyomo will translate it to each individual one. And the good thing about the Pyomo is that it is solver agnostic. What does it mean? It, does, it means that if you are successful in um, translating your problem to Pyomo, then you don't need to be worried about how Pyomo is going to talk to each individual solvers. Somebody might ask me, um, is it possible to just ignore the Pyomo and directly talk to Cplex, Ruby, IPOP, GLPK, CBC? And I say, yes, it is possible, okay? Then you have to learn the language of Cplex. Then you have to learn the language of Ruby and any other solver that you want to talk to. Mm -hmm. But if you learn the language of Pyomo, then Pyomo acts as a translator for you. That's the simplicity of the tool, okay? So each Pyomo model has some basic elements, sets. It can be used for counting the variables, for example. So let's say a student number one, a student number two, 
company number one, company number two, generation one, two, three, four, five. Yeah. And the variables are those quantities that you need to optimize and you need to find the optimal values for them. Hmm? And parameters are the input data of your model. Okay. And the constraints are representing the relation between the variables and parameters. So you say the summation of the number of generation of different generating units should be less than something or equal to something or greater than something. The difference between two consecutive time period and the difference between generation in two consecutive time periods cannot exceed than some values. These are the things that are described in constraints. And finally, the objective functions. You want to minimize the payments, you want to maximize your profit, you want to minimize the risk or anything that you define. Hmm? So these are the five elements that create your model and it will be attached to the model. Each model is consisting of um, these five elements or some of them. At least it, it should have objective function and some variables to optimize, yes? Okay, so let me, uh, and then finally, outside your Pyomo uh, package, you will have some solvers, as I already mentioned them, GLPK or IPR or C++ or whatever, okay? And then you need to visualize your decision variables if you want. This is, these are the outside the Pyomo package. And the good thing about the Pyomo is that um, it can easily communicate with different solvers, and also it can use the visualization facilities and packages in Python. And you are better familiar with those packages like Matplotlib, like Bokeh or any other GGA plot or whatever you want, okay? So you can easily use those facilities. And also Python is very capable of um, communicating with different databases like Excel, like other kind of databases, okay? So if you can use other packages like um, NumPy, Panda or anything else, for reading the data or um, doing some pre-analysis kind of um, studies on your data, it's easy to do, okay? Once you are ready, you can pass your data as a parameter to your model and then extract the solve values and then you can do whatever you want. You can, again, pass this to some other packages and do some more analysis on it and do visualization or whatever you want. This is something that is not very easy to do with other kind of optimization tools like GAMS. So GAMS is not capable of using the um, Python packages directly. It can communicate with Python, but not as fast as you can uh, using the Pyomo, some package that which is already inside the Python. Okay, let's go forward. Um, so let me solve the very simple example. This is the only code I'm going to show you, I, I promise. So this is a very simple example, objective function, two decision variables, x1, x2, two constraints, positive variables. And this is a very simple optimization model. We want to maximize my objective function, okay? So if I want to define a Pyoma model, I should say, okay, this four is a parameter because I already know it. Hmm? And these x1, x2 are my variables because I want to find their optimal values. And also this specific one and the other one are my constraints because it's showing the relation between x1 and x2. Hmm? And finally, this is my objective function, okay? So I don't have any set. I could have defined my problem that can use the sets as well. But the beauty of the set is that um, if the dimensions of your uh, problem increases, then you don't need to do some more editing on your model because you can easily say, this relation should be valid for every xi, and then you don't care how many I you will have in your model, okay? And this is the code that you can use for solving this simple optimization problem. So as usual, when you want to do the Python coding, you will import the required package, pyomo.environment, import everything that is inside that package. And this is your model. Name the model as an abstract model. Um, you don't need to know what's the extra abstract model. Abstract model is giving you the capability of let's say updating the parameters in your model and um, you don't need to recreate the model from the scratch. Mm -hmm. And you do have two um, X1 and X2, you see, and two constraints, C1 and C2, and you write down the relation between the values and as simple as that, okay? I intentionally made it very simple so it's understandable and does not scare you. 
And also you say, okay, the solver I'm going to use for solving my problem is called GLPK. I could have used Groovy, I could have used CBC or anything else that is ca capable of handling linear programming. This is a linear programming, okay? And then you will create an instance, basically and simply, Payomo is trying to understand what have you, uh, you have written here. It will create some set of um, mathematical equations that represent what you have told it to do. Hmm? And then the last tab is trying to solve using the opt that you have already defined as a tool for solving your problem. And we'll pass the instance to that specific solver. And the results will contain your uh, decision variables and everything else. Here, I've just printed the value of the objective function. I could have said, print the value of x1 and x2, as simple as that, okay? So uh, here, the code is not very well written because if I increase the number of my decision variable, I have to add a new line, x3, for example. If I add a new constraint, I have to add a new constraint, xc3, for example, okay? But I could have said aij xj plus aij yj and xj and the other x, hmm? and this way, if the number of my decision variable increases, I don't need to update the formulation. I just change the coefficients. Yes, I just update the coefficients and then ask the Payomo to resolve it for me. Hmm? Okay, let's go forward and show you um, some more interesting examples. So one of the applications of the uh, um, optimization problem is in aviation industry. So there are end planes in the sky and they are rotating uh, on the top of the control center. And this person or the software, which is located here, is trying to make sure that it's not creating any aviation accident or at, at, at the same time, um, optimally allow the uh, airplanes to land on the ground. What does it mean? So it means that, for example, it looks easy, but it's not actually. So each individual airplane has a target time to land and it has a final time. It can't land after this time and it can land before this time. So this is a, this is a constraint. Mm -hmm. And if it lands at specifically at the target time, there is no penalty associated with that. But if it has to land earlier than its target time, it, they have to pay some earliness pe penalty. Or after that, they have to pay some tardiness penalty. So the idea is avoiding any accident and also minimize the total penalty that they have to pay. Hmm? So, uh, and each individual airplane has its own, let's say, limitations. Some of them can, can't land before the others or anything else that you want to consider, okay? So in practice, this means that we have to solve a larger scale optimization problem. So airplane I should, be, should land before airplane J. Mm -hmm. So it is somehow represented as a binary variable, I before J, yes or no, to be or not to be, okay? So if the number of these airplanes increases, the dimension of the problem increases so fast and exponentially, and the number of variables goes up, and it becomes more and more difficult to solve. So there are some formulations here. I'm not going to discuss them here, but I just want to mention that what I described in the previous slide has to be written in some mathematic ways, yes? So a start final, the landing time is xi. Should i be, uh, land before j, uij, it's a binary variable. So you can see here, there are some formulation is needed here in order to make sure that what you said is understood by Payomo or not, yeah? And then pass it to the solver and ask the solver to solve it for you, hmm? okay? So writing down this formulation is the most important thing. Uh, and the next step is how to translate these mathematics for the Payomo in a correct way. Okay, so this is a solution, for example, you get if you solve the problem uh, using the Payomo, it will tell you exactly each airplane should uh, land at which time hmm, and how much earliness penalty or uh, tardiness penalty is happening. So you see the, let's say, for example, the blue one, is exactly landed at its target time. The light green one is exactly landed at its target time, but this pink one is a little bit late, uh, landed later than its target time. So it's done in a way that uh, the total penalty that is happening here is minimized. This is one simple example on sh uh, which is showing us how this optimization problem is 
um, handy and useful in such situation, okay? So the other application is also in the uh, aviation industry. So we do have, for example, we are trying to load a cargo airplane. And as you better know, the space inside an airplane, a passenger one or a cargo airplane is limited. Mm -hmm. So we want to make sure that if we want to transfer some products, for example, here, the yellow, red, blue, and green ones, um, how should we allocate them inside the airplane? Of course, the, the, the ideal case is that we can load all of them to, into the airplane, but as we better know, the, limit, the space is limited. So based on the value of them, based on the weight of them, based on the volume of them, we have to decide which one we should put in the airplane. And also we know that the airplane, we can't put everything in the front of airplane, everything in the middle of airplane or everything at the uh, back of the airplane. We have to somehow optimally distribute this allocation in order to not cause any uh, technical challenge for the airplane to let's say take off or land, yes? So if I remember correctly, um, there was a challenge, optimization challenge um, designed by Airbus, which is also available on their website. And they were asking experts how we can um, allocate this amount of products inside an airplane in order to make sure that the distribution is in an ideal way as they describe. And we want to maximize the total number of products we can put in the airplane. So this is a serious kind of question they are facing with them. So uh, you see the, 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 the decision variable is saying that, okay, the blue one should go to which location. So if I call them I, products I, and the location as J, so we have to find out how much is the X I J. So how much of product I should go to location J. Hmm? to maximize an objective function, which is the uh, total profit in this specific example. So what are my constraints? So basically and simply speaking, so the uh, section F, which is, for example, the back of the airplane um, has some limited space in, in terms of the volume, meter cube, and also the total amount of um, weight that we can put in that specific location is also limited. So we have to make sure that we are not loading each individual section of the airplane more than its safety limit. Hmm? And also we know that we can't load the airplane with more than the products that we have. This is as simple as I said. So if we have, let's say 10 items, we can't put 11 items in the airplane because we don't have any more items here. So these are the constraints that we can write down. And also we need to know the total weight of each individual product. There are four products here. There are, there are some volumes associated to, to each individual product, and there are some profits associated to each individual product. And uh, also for each section of the airplane, we have weight limit, we have a space limit, and we try to make sure that the um, optimization is correctly formulated. As I said before, this is the most important step in my optimization plan. So it means that the total weight that we are going to put into the airplane is less than its total weight. So we can't put more than 18 tons of product C into the airplane. This is very simple, but it should be included in my optimization problem. Otherwise, it will give me some uh, nonsense and um, wrong answers. And also the total volume should be also um, observed as well. And also um, the, 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 the weighting limit and the space limit is also observed. And we want to maximize my uh, profit. This looks simple, but when you want to write it down correctly, uh, it's a bit challenging because any anything mis any mistake that you make here at this stage is not understood by Pyomo or any other solvers. Okay. Sometimes grammatically it's correct, but it has no meaning. Hmm? So when you formulate your problem, you need to make sure that mathematically speaking, it's correctly describing the problem you are trying to solve. This is a very simple example, and let's go to the Next one, okay, this is a linear programming. And the beauty of this type of formulation in Pyomo is that, as you can see here in my formulation, you don't see any number. What does it mean? It means that, for example, here I do have four products. I do have three locations. I just named the locations J. J is running from one, two, three. I is running from one, two, three, four, yeah? So this formulation, look at this formulation. I just need to explain quickly something here. So if the number of I or J changes, I don't need to change my formula. Hmm? The formula is still correct, okay? 
I just need to update my table and the data that I'm feeding into my optimization problem. So with just, let's say, four lines of the code, I have formulated a large scale optimization practical problem. Yeah, that's the beauty of that. There is a beautiful uh, map color uh, map here. You can see here, it shows the counties of um, Ireland. So maybe all of us have seen such um, maps. So it is also um, created for every individual country or around the world. So if you look at them, you will see them with different colors. They are very beautiful. And there is something um, followed here. And it is try to make sure that if a, a county is painted with yellow, no neighbor country is painted with the same color, you see? So if it's painted with pink, the, all the neighbors are painted with different colors. This is, this is a very important thing here in order to make some individual uh, county uh, specify on the map, yeah? So in order to formulate that, we can easily do it using Pyomo or any other kind of optimization problem. This is actually an optimization problem. We want to minimize the number of colors used for painting this graph, yeah? So we just simply say, if they are in neighbor of each other, um, the, the variables, the, the color associated to them should be different. How should I say that? So I define a binary variable called XIC, which is representing the color that is used for painting node I or the county I. It's a binary one. So each county is assigned to one specific color. So how can I make sure that? So I say summation of X, I, C, summation over C is equal to one. This is ensuring that um, each individual I is only associated with one specific color, not, not less than that, not more than that, yeah? And also make sure that if they are located in neighbor of each other, they are not painted with the same color. Hmm? So it might needed some time to spend on the formulation, but I just wanted to let you know, most of the things that we see every day in our uh, daily life are obtained using the optimization. If you look at the uh, map of the trains or metro in uh, large um, metropolitan in around the world, like in Paris or like in New York and London, you see, some graph that are representing the metro map, yeah? They might look very beautiful and easy to understand, but there are some optimizations behind that. So how? There are some nodes on each um, um, map, uh, metro map, that are representing the uh, metro stops, but the way they have um, drawn the lines is making sure that the lines are only 90 degrees or 45 degrees, for example, okay? And this is, very, this is a very difficult optimization problem to solve. We need to allocate all the um, metro stops or bus stops or train stops in a way that the shape of the graph at the end is something that we are looking for. Hmm? So you see the role of optimization in our daily life. Another thing which is relevant to these days, um, topic is the vaccination center allocation. So for example, you do have, you can see some uh, blue nodes here, which are representing, let's say the population uh, around the country. We want to make sure that every people have access to vaccination centers, okay? Uh, but we don't have, um, we can't put one vaccination center for every people. So we have to decide in which locations we have to put these vaccination centers and make sure that um, the access is available for every people, or at least a large percentage of the people, okay? So the, this is actually an optimization problem. We want to make sure that at each individual node, should we put a vaccination center or we should not put a vaccination center and make sure that the budget we are spending for this purpose um, is um, considered in, and taken into account when we want to make decisions. Okay, so as you can see, it involves some uh, binary variables. Should we put or should we not put a vaccination center? And if you put a center, it can cover some specific range of people. Yes, but and if we increase the number of them is um, covering more. This is exactly uh, similar to the, uh, the topic of allocating communication towers. Yes, so for example, if you put an antenna in some area, some specific number of people are served with that antenna, yeah? And also we know that we can't put antenna everywhere. 
So these are the things that are happening in our daily life. Okay, let's go forward. Um, this is another example. Let me go to the next one. And this is a very interesting one. This is my favorite one. This is the uh, chessboard. And uh, this is the knight movement. So if you see here that the knight can start from one point and it can move in some specific movements. So it can move from a starting point to here and then here. And the idea is covering all the cells in the, on the chessboard. So you see, so it is trying to cover everywhere without um, returning to what the cell that it has already visited. So you see, it is trying to visit everywhere and go out. Okay, so this is very, looks very simple, but it's hugely complicated. How? Look at the formula. It has some variables called uij, okay? It has some form, a variable called uij. It means that should I go from i to j? So if I call this um, uij means that the row one, column a, row one, column two, and so on and so forth, yeah? So I have, eight i's, I have eight j's, it means that in total I have 64 combinations. Is that right? So it means that, for example, no, sorry, um, if I define the variable this way, my i is representing every single cell. So I have 64 cells and i and j, it means that should I go from cell i to cell j or not? Yeah. So 64 multiplied by 64 means 64 to the power of two. It's around six, uh, 3,700 something, if I'm correct, okay? So if I have only one cell, if I have only two cells, should I go from cell one to cell two? It's zero or one. If I have four cells, it means that two to the power of four combination might exist. Now I do have two to the power of, 3,700 um, combinations, two to the power of that. It's a huge number. Mm -hmm. So you see, it's, it's very complicated. And somebody might ask me, um, okay, it's complicated. And it, can, it seems that uh, Payomo is capable of solving that, but what's the use of it, yeah? In reality, nobody is trying to move the knight over the chessboard. And I agree with them, yeah? So, can you show us a more practical example about the TSP problems? What does it mean, T traveling salesperson? So somebody is starting from one cell and is trying to meet every cell and come back to the original point or exit the um, surface, for example, okay? So let me show you a practical application of that. Look at here. This map shows the location of the Dublin bars, at least in some specific area. And this um, vehicle is trying to feed and supply the Guinness beer to all these uh, specific bars, okay? And obviously you know that the capacity of these vehicles are limited. So it means that it has a start from the Guinness factory and serve some of these bars and go back to the original point, refill the vehicle, and go and serve the remaining ones, and how many times it should be done, and how many um, vehicles are needed every day. This is not only in the alcoholic, let's say, industry, but also in dairy farms and dairy industry as well. For example, if, um, um, if Avonmore is trying to collect the uh, dairy products and milks from the different farmers, their vehicle needs to go and collect the uh, products they have produced and come back to the, uh, to the factory and do this again and again. And this should be done in a quick way and in a most efficient way. Mm -hmm. So they need to know which route they have to follow, which pubs or which dairy farms they have to serve first in their first trip and what they should do in their next trip, okay? This is a very realistic, um, optimization problem, which is happening every day in the industry, okay? And it's a very complicated one as well. Because as I said before, when the number of nodes increases, two to the power of number of nodes square increases of the, is the number, is representing the number of my decision variables, which is very large scale, 
and we do have to uh, find some ways to um, represent the optimization problem and find some ways to um, solve it using the solver because the solvers uh, will receive these problem description from Payomo and then try to solve it, but they are not magician. They are capable of handling some specific number of variables. We have to make sure that we are making it easier for them to solve the problem. We somehow need to inject our knowledge and help them uh, to find the optimal solution. For example, let me give you a very quick example. So if two pubs are very close to each other, definitely they will be inside the same route. So it means that if the vehicle starts from the Guinness factory from here and serves this guy here, then definitely this one will be served as well, okay? So it means that most probably uh, there's a link between these two and these two together. But definitely this pub, this specific pub and the other one here, there is no direct link between them. But before solving the problem, without having some knowledge about the optimization problem, we can't specify this to the Payomo or any other optimization problem. Okay, that's enough. Drinking is enough. Let's go to the next one. Okay, so here you see another optimization problem, which is an interesting one. Suppose you do have some points on the surface. Some of them are, let's say, um, red. Some of them are uh, yellow. The yellow ones are representing some positive point. The red ones are representing some negative point. And if I ask you to specify a rectangle on the surface that contains the maximum amount of summation of the point, which is inside of it, okay? So where is the location of this specific um, rectangle? What is the dimension of it? This is, a, this is an optimization problem. Suppose you want to serve an area and you know that if you specify your area, you will face with some negative values right there and also some positive values right there. But how should you make the trade-off between these two? As you can see, the problem description looks easy but when you want to write it down as a mathematical optimization in a way that is uh, understood by Python or any other kind of software, it's a little bit complicated, okay? So for example, look at here, there are some multiplication of some binary variables here. So when you have multiplication of the variables, it means that you will face with some nonlinearities. You need to make sure that nonlinearities do not exist in your model because it's making it more complicated. There are some ways and some techniques and some arts to um, transform these nonlinearity into linearity. And also, as I discussed earlier, uh, the Pareto optimal form or multi-objective optimization is another interesting tool that can be addressed using Payomo, which means that we have two objective functions. We want to, let's say, maximize both of them or minimize both of them. It means that we can provide a set of solutions instead of only one solution. So if we want to maximize these objective functions, means that uh, green, white, blue, and orange one are the best one, for example. But these red ones is, let's say, dominating the orange one because, let's say, it is um, better than orange in every aspect. So that can be handled using Pyomo. So we introduce some epsilon constraint into my formulation and then ask the Payomo to solve it for us, okay? So instead of having only one solution, we will have a series of solutions and we will give it to the decision maker to pick one of them. If you go to, the, um, to an Apple shop, you don't see only one Apple um, phone. You see a variety of the solutions right there. Why? Because if it was only one solution right there, which was better than every aspect from the other solution, you would definitely go for that specific one. But they create the solutions in a way that somehow they are making some trade-off between, between the objectives. Some of them is more expensive, but better performance. The other one is less expensive, but the performance is lower down, okay? So this is another type of optimization that can be so solved using Payomo. The other problem that I already uh, tackled was football team selection. What does it mean? So these managers are always trying to make the, um, and create the best team they can. So they want to consider the quality, the cost, and for each individual post or position in the match. So this uh, database shows the available um, footballers in the Germany. So 
Manuel Neuer uh, ha- has the position and um, it plays at, as a goalkeeper, for example, posi- um, post of one, or let's say Boateng is playing as post number three, uh, which is a, let's say, I don't know which one is it, but that's fine. But, and also each individual um, player has some points. It has some, um, let's say money value. And there is a large database over there. And the manager needs to decide, okay, I only need five forward players. I only need eight mid, mid, uh, midfielders, okay? Six defenders and only three goalkeepers, okay? I only have some limited budget and only 11 players will start the match, okay? How can I maximize the value of my team and decide about the selection of the players, okay? This is a very serious one that is already uh, into action in the different countries, specifically in professional leagues. Okay, and interesting uh, example is given here, which is on purpose. I was trying to make sure that um, most of us are aware of the importance of the optimization. These days, we hear a lot about the data science, uh, deep learning, um, data analytics, and different things, okay? So I just make need to make sure that um, every, each individual of these techniques has some optimization on its core. What does it mean? For example, if you look at this graph, you can see that there are some black points here, but is there, and everybody is familiar with the linear regression. So we are trying to cross a linear line uh, from, uh, among our data, which is try to mimic the behavior of the data. But if we, we are more flexible and we are allowed to, uh, to select three lines, what will be the, these three lines? This is somehow clustering the data, okay? So the formulation is given here. It is tried to uh, fit different lines into the, uh, into the data and assign each individual data to one line. So you see exactly the same data is um, clustered this way. So multi-line fitting analysis is happening here. This is a very simple example, but the difference between this specific approach optimization one and the, and using the available packages is that um, you are exactly doing the same, but optimization problems like this are capable of handling multiple uh, constraint, additional constraint. So if you use an um, off-the-shelf package for linear regression, for example, but if you want to add more physical constraint to the problem, it's not very easy to do unless they have already thought about that specific constraint. But in the formulation that I've provided here, for example, this is easy to add, let's say, some of the data cannot go to the same cluster, for example. This can be easily added to the analysis. Okay, just to uh, make a heads up uh, about the situation. Okay, so uh, I think that's enough about the general example. Let's go to my own um, uh, research topic, which is the power system. So here, you see the air grid um, transmission map. You will see some different transmission lines in the system. This is 400 kV the transmission line. The green ones, if I'm correct, there are 220 kV and uh, the black ones are 110 kV. And this is the Northern Ireland. The, the situation is somehow different. And for example, the winds are in the West and the South of the country. Okay, the wind farms are in the West and the South of the country. and the Energy should flow from the West to the center of the demand, which is Dublin, for example, okay? So if something happens to the system or if the demand changes in the system, these flows of the energy should pass through these lines and reach to the demand and to the customers, yes? So we, air grid or any other transmission system uh, operator needs to make sure that the system is efficiently operated. And also, um, let me check the Q&A. Okay, so I'll answer that later, uh, David. Um, so here you see the analysis that shows that for different time of the year, how the um, transmission lines are being loaded. The, the system that is used is IEEE 118 um, uh, bus network. This is not air grid system, but I just want to mention that this exactly the same kind of analysis is happening in uh, practice. So we want to make sure that we understand the situation and the health of the system. This is something that can be easily done using the Piomo. 
And also um, some other analysis can happen here with the help of the Python. So you see the line loading duration curve. So each individual line in the system is being loaded at some degrees. So some of the lines are utilized more, some of them are utilized less. And we want to make sure that we better understand the situation in the system. So the maximum line loading, minimum line loading, the average of the line loading in the system is identified. And then we can also do more with the Python. This is the, the Pyomo part is finished, okay? So we, we can do some extra analysis on the system and find out which of the lines in the system are, let's say, um, showing similar behavior. They are increasing the loading uh, simultaneously. They are acting in um, opposite of each other. And this way we can understand better the situation of the system. So if we find out some of the lines are um, being loaded simultaneously, this means that if one of these lines is in trouble, is caught in some way because of the, let's say, flood or storm or um, snow, heavy snow in Dublin, for example, this means that the system will be in danger. Yeah. So it means that if these specific lines that are acting together have some threat for them, the system will collapse, for example. So we need to make sure that these systems are safe and these specific lines needs to be reinforced and so on and so forth, yeah? So these are the tools that can be used for identifying the problems in the system and mitigate those problems. Okay, this is my final slide, but I will get back to your question. Look at this graph. Look at this graph. It only takes 20 seconds. So there are 180, red points on the um on this on this circle okay and if i continue that you see i can you guess who is this guy no that's why it's joker okay so uh, the idea is trying to find out um there are 180 nodes on this uh, circle and if i want to make sure that every point is connected to the other one how many lines can i draw so it means that if I don't draw a line between me and myself, I can connect each individual point to 179 other points. And if I am connected to you, then you are also connected to me. So I divided by two, yeah? So these are the total number of lines that can be drawn here, okay? And these are the total number of lines, but how can I draw this picture? It means that I should decide which one of these 16,000 lines should exist and which one should not exist. It means that two to the power of this number should be checked. So it is around 10 to the power of 4,833. And if each individual zero has the width of two millimeters, if I write down this number, it means that the length of this number will be around 10 hurling stick with the length of uh, 96 centimeters, okay? It's around 10 meter long, the, the length of this uh, specific number, okay? So it's a huge optimization problem, but we could easily manage it and handle it with the Pyomo. Okay, and now I have reached to the point that I can answer the question. So let me check the um, question. Is anybody going to read the question for me or I can, I should do it? What do you think? I can't read that for you if you wish. Please. Yeah. Okay. David Paul is asking, how does the multi-level linear regression clustering happen? Okay. Good question. Let me get back to the if I can't find that, do you remember the slide number? Um, I'm trying to find the slide number. Just a second. Yeah. So if we agree with the concept of linear regression, it means that actually we are assuming a line with unknown um, slope and unknown um, distance from the origin, okay? And we want to make sure that the summation of the errors 
between the data that I have and that specific uh, line is minimized, okay? Now I have given the flexibility of the data to be assigned to, to three different lines, okay? And instead of one, they have the, um, the freedom of being attached to one, each, one specific line, okay? So uh, the, the freedom is increased here and it is tried to make sure that each individual data is assigned to a line and the characteristics of each line is found, okay? So basically and simply speaking, it means that the data that are associated with each line are somehow showing the same kind of behavior, okay? That might not be very accurate. I agree with you. Some of the data might be outliers. They are not exactly following the same pattern, but this is the limitations of that specific methodology, okay? I'm not saying that this is perfect, but if we use, let's say, uh, available packages in Python uh, to find out, to do the regression, uh, linear regression analysis, this means that we can also do it using the Pyomo. Yeah. I hope I've answered your question. It seems so, yes. So Connor is asking, how are your proposed solutions tested? Uh, is it by a reduction to, of the problem to something that can be understood easily or via uh, interpretation or by someone with domain expertise? Okay, very good. Um, I think your the, the question of the corner is somehow yeah, related to the power. the power grid, yeah. Yeah, okay, very good question. So um, when I was at AirGrid, the AirGrid experts were using a industry software called uh, PSSE, which is a very powerful uh, and a strong um, software for analyzing the power system. It is capable of handling large scale power systems, okay? And they use that specific software for uh, identifying the risky lines in the system. Then um, when I propose them to, uh, you, you can also use some other optimization problems to uh, tackle the same problem. They were somehow hesitant of using these softwares. They, they were right because uh, it was not tested as you mentioned here, okay? So the thing that I did was comparing the results with the softwares that they had and the one that I had already developed using the optimization uh, formulation. So the results were, somehow very similar to each other. But you might say, if they are similar, what, what do we get by using these, let's say, open source tools? First of all, you, you don't need to pay for the license. The second thing is that, for example, the PSSE software is only capable of handling one snapshot of the system. What does it mean? It means that for one given date, demand and generation value for every single boss in the system, you can do the analysis and find out which line is um, overloaded or not. What, what happens if n minus one constraint is added to the system? But what if additional constraint needs to be addressed? What if the transition between two consecutive time periods is also going to be considered? This is not something that PSSC is capable of doing, okay? So these are the things that we can do for, uh, let's say proving the proposed solution is uh, somehow practical as and implementable. As I said, different constraint, whatever you can describe mathematically can be formulated and added to the optimization problem, which is not happening in the, uh, let's say commercial softwares. They just do whatever the company that they have designed the software is um, put inside the package. So slightly more efficient, but very specialized, right? Exactly. <clears throat> so whereas this open source package is quite generally uh, quite general and can be applied to a, exactly. a number. I can of say, problems. yeah, I can, yeah, I can say, it doesn't understand any specific discipline. It doesn't understand the supply chain management. It doesn't understand the power system. It doesn't understand anything but the math maths. Okay. So whatever you can describe using mathematics can be solved using Pyomo. And that's the beauty of it. 
and also the challenge of it, right? Yeah. <laughs> It takes practice, right? You need right? to do to... it correctly. You, you need to do it correctly. Otherwise, it will give you some odd results, you know? So the model is as accurate as you specified for it. You know, if, if you make mistake in um, describing your model mathematically, it doesn't understand it's wrong. So the expert should be always like that. But the commercial software are more developed in this regard because they can test your assumptions. They can uh, show you some uh, alarms or something else that shows that your assumptions are wrong. But whatever you want to do, you need to design yourself here. But it's for free. Yes, it's the CISO effect. Exactly. Uh, anyone? No, I think uh, I think uh, we are impressed <laughs> of the versatility of the applications. Okay, um, I didn't hard. want to go to the details of the formulation and the coding because it was going to be boring, I think. But um, if you want to learn it, there are lots of online resources on the payomo.org website, I think. So there are lots of solved examples right there, which, which you can easily have access to them and they are freely available to everybody. Um, yeah, and that's it from my side actually. <laughs>